Welcome to Delightful. We're kicking off the spooky season early this year. You already know from the title and thumbnail, of course, but I'll be making a tiny raven familiar, art doll style. Let's jump in. First up, the hubby uses his magical sculpting ability to form a raven head and legs out of digital clay, following the very rough blueprint I sent him. I've mentioned before that he primarily uses ZBrush, but other options include Mudbox or Blender if you're interested. He loves to study, so he knows, like, all the 3D programs. I'm like, I know Photoshop? That's good enough for me. As always, the hubby and I are more than willing to share the 3D files with you. We use our resin printer for this project, ensuring we get a high amount of detail even though the pieces are so small. Once those are printed and cleaned up, the hubby delivers the parts back to me. Aw oh, yeah, these came out great. I love its angry eyes. Let's add paint. This is pretty easy because the raven is solid black, but I do want to pick out and highlight some of those beautiful feathery details, as well as change the beak color to a subtle dark gray. And of course, we need to bring out the eyes. The talons get a similar treatment. I use dark gray acrylic paint to highlight the edges of the, um... They're not scales, are they? What do you call the scaly skin on bird legs? Anyway, we highlight all of those for more visual clarity. Once those pieces dry, we can coat them with a mixture of matte varnish and water. This keeps the paint from chipping off when I inevitably knock it off a shelf or something. Paint insurance, basically. I prefer two coats. Next, to connect the parts. Hubby sculpted two pegs and indents into the beak, so with a little shove, we should be able to pop it in place. <coughs> to get the perfect size peg for the leg joint, I whittle down a toothpick until it's just the right thickness. I want it to be taut, not loose, so that the legs can bend and hold a pose. Insert. Cut and add a touch of glue for safety, and voila! Bird legs! That's the easy part done. Now to make the body. I'm approaching this art doll style, in other words, forming a skeleton of the creature first before covering it with a plush body. I drew a little picture to help guide me. Take a look. I'll use three strips of wire for the body, that's the purple lines, and one long strip of wire that goes across the body to form both wings. So, using this sturdy but bendable wire, I cut the segments. This is the best wire I could find for the occasion, but I don't need to tell you that if bent enough times, all wire will eventually break. So, wire is by no means the perfect material for doll making, but as long as you aren't constantly bending the wings, it should last a good long time. With the wire twisted and bent together, I cut out strips of black fabric to encase the skeleton. I add a tiny dab of hot glue to the tip just to keep the pieces from moving. Then sew fabric strips together down the length of the body, avoiding the wings and legs. This is about when I realized how hard it is to film a solid black object because you can't see what's going on at all. It's like trying to photograph my black cat. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, I know, but once you've gone all the way around, bulk up the body with fluff. As usual, I'm using acrylic yarn left over from making doll hair. Next, the wings go on like so. And two tiny bits of fabric go around the leg wires. I know it's really hard to see at this point. <laughs> I'm basically sewing tiny little pants to the body that encompass the exposed wire. With a touch of hot glue, I fit the legs on over the wire and squish the fabric down around the upper leg resin piece. 
I'm not sure I mentioned, the upper leg part has a hole in it for the wire to insert into. And of course, the head goes on as well. I pour hot glue in through the mouth to seal the end at another angle, and I can't believe I pulled that off. Seems risky. <laughs> but I got a good blob down the gullet there, so it feels more secure. At the moment, the doll just looks like some kind of creepy Blair Witch effigy, so next up are the feathery bits. Step one, as always, is picking the cat hair out of the fabric. Ugh. Then I'm going to take your average craft glue and coat the entire surface. I'm working with black, so I don't have to worry about discoloring the fabric, but if you're using this technique with a different color, test a corner of the fabric first to make sure it dries okay. Once it's dried, the glue leaves a glossy sheen on the fabric, very feather-like, and most importantly, will keep the edges from fraying when I cut out the pattern pieces. I made paper patterns of the wings and tail first to get the right size, then pin and cut them out of the fabric. I cut eight wing pieces and two tail pieces. Seems excessive, but I'm going to stack the wings, four layers on each side. Starting with two of the biggest wing layers, I sandwich the armature inside and sew down the outside using a whip stitch, making sure I catch the first fabric layer underneath. Then the secondary feathery layers go on, again on either side. Lastly, the tail. You guessed it, the two layers sandwich the plush body, and I sew just around the base of the tail, not all the way out to the feathery tips. To finish this step, I dab on glue on the outermost feathers, sealing the two layers together at the tips. I did this on the tail as well. Looking slightly less like an effigy now, <laughs> but still, this raven is very skinny. Let's bulk it up and add finishing touches with some faux fur. Much like the first time I sewed the body, cut thin strips of fabric and stitch them to the doll, trimming off bits here and there to fit it to the form. I also add a strip down the back, and end it at the tail in a point like this. Lastly, I take loose tufts of fur and glue them directly to the head. I layer it up on the throat area as well, and even put one tuft on the articulated lower beak itself to hide the gap. Wow, that is a floofy burb! Time for a haircut! And with that, it's done! I hope you like how our tiny raven came out. You may notice I switched the eye color to yellow at the last minute. I think it looks a bit spookier for Halloween. I love how fluffy it is. I love how derpy the front view looks, just like a real bird. And I love how this raven looks ready to cause some mischief. I get the feeling this raven belongs to someone. It might even be someone's familiar. But whose familiar could it be? Well, you'll have to stick around to find out. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next episode. Stay artsy! Annyeong! <laughs>